So if you're a freelance filmmaker, photographer, or creative of any kind, I can almost guarantee you can relate to this. So you've had a great year, you've worked with some amazing clients, done some awesome projects with awesome people, and then December rolls around and things really start to slow down, which is great for a while. You get to spend time with family, you know, slow down, take a well-deserved break. But after the holidays, January rolls around, things are still slow. February rolls around, maybe you have one or two things, but things are still pretty slow. At least that's been my experience this year. And then there's just this growing feeling of anxiety and of dread of, am I ever gonna work again? And inevitably you will. But during that slow period, I found that one of the best ways to fend off some of that anxiety and stay creatively engaged is by doing some creative exercises. And one of my favorite to do is the self-portrait. So the great thing about doing a self-portrait is it can be as small or as large as you want it to be. Uh, it can be still, it can be video, you can use lights, you can not use lights, you can shoot it on your cinema camera, you can shoot it on your phone. It doesn't really matter. The key here is that it gives you an opportunity to experiment, maybe try something new and get really creative. So for me, I really started getting into this idea during the COVID lockdown. I was shooting a few projects, but work was really slow and I needed some sort of creative outlet. I was just feeling suffocated. So one day I decided I'm gonna do something. I, I have equipment here, I have myself, I might as well do something. So I'll go ahead and show you a few of those now. And what I think is really fun about this idea is that again, you can really get creative and even in a space that you know super well, I think you can always find a new angle or a new idea. And the great part about this is you don't necessarily need a lot of equipment. What I keep in my apartment is my camera and one or two lights. So you may not be lighting in sort of the traditional way that you think about, but what it does encourage you to do is A, use natural light and B, use practicals and lean into just composition, framing and all the other more simple aspects that we sometimes forget about in filmmaking. So oftentimes I don't even use any lights. I just use the existing light, I will turn on a lamp and kind of really lean into that look. And that's kind of led to some really interesting results. I think when you have these sort of creative limitations, it encourages creativity. It encourages you to think outside the box and come up with something entirely new. I often find that when working on like a commercial or something, you kind of play it a little bit safe at times just because you know what works and you know what results you need to achieve. But I think experimenting on your own time is a catalyst for more creativity on set. So if you can achieve something like this by yourself, I mean, just imagine what you can do with a full crew and all the resources of a full production. Okay, so I think that's enough talk. Let's go make something. Okay, so here's where we are just filming and as I'm looking around the apartment, something that I love is this lamp that I have right by the door. So I think it would be great to do something with this. So the equipment I'm using for this is my red Komodo with the Mir 1 37mm Prime, which is a vintage Soviet lens. Small HD 702 touch for monitoring. The Amaran F22C, which has quickly become one of my favorite lights for a versatile soft source and the Nanlite Pavo Tube 6C, which is great for an easy eye light or hiding somewhere in a shot. I started off by finding a frame that I thought would be interesting. And when I'm looking for a unique frame, I tend to just think about foreground or creating unique perspective with lens choice, but I don't often think about using extreme angles. So I decided to put the camera all the way to the ground here and shoot up at myself and into the lamp. It took a little bit of experimentation to get myself in the right spot with the lamp frame nicely, but here's how that first shot looked. This is with no additional lighting and I think it's looking pretty good. But after reviewing the shot, I just wanted to see a little more of my face. So I switched my pose a little bit and rolled another take. And I'm just adjusting the framing a bit as I look at the monitor, which I always have facing towards me to check framing and focus. So I really like what's going on here, but 
I just wish I had a bit more level on my face and something to catch in the eyes. So at first I experiment with the Pavo tube, putting it in different places to see what that adds. And then I decide to bring the Amaran F22C over just to add to what the lamp is already doing. I'm really happy with the overall lighting at this point, so I do one more take and call it good. After looking at that shot, I'm feeling good and I, I like the mood a lot, but I just don't love the angle. I think it's just a bit too up my nose. So I decide to go for the complete opposite angle and put the camera as high as it will go on the sticks and point you straight down. And I think this shot is really cool. I love the lighting and the foreground from the lamp and the high angle lets you see a lot more of my expression and it just feels a bit more cohesive overall. I had a crazy idea to extend the pan bar down so I can slowly pan the camera while I'm laying there. And this is not something I've thought about doing before, so it was fun to add that extra level of complexity. So I think that's a good example of how I usually go about these things. I mean, I'm not extremely specific about it. There's no real specific end goal in mind. It's just to experiment, create, and see what comes of it. And that's what I really love about this process is it feels so much more approachable than say creating a short film or a music video or anything like that. This is something that you can knock out in, you know, at most an afternoon. And that is really, really important for me just to be able to create on a consistent basis. So remember, just lean into what you have available to you. Use the location that you're already in, use the equipment you have, use the lighting you have, and just create something that you want to share with your friends. Give it a try and if you create something that you like, I would love to check it out. I'd love to engage with you on that. So feel free to send me that on Instagram. I'll link that below. I'm also on TikTok. You can find me there for some bite-sized filmmaking tips. And until next time, hope you have a good one.